Well, welcome back. I'm Keith Reynolds, host of Morning Coffee. Um, I'm here with my, uh, I'm going to mess it up again, but I'm here with Mark Cook, my uh, co-host. <laughs> and we have uh, a new co-host that's joined us for this segment, um, Jeff Pennett. Did I say that right, Pettit. Jeff? Jeff Pettit. 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 Jeff is uh, joining uh, Radio Vision Network, and he's going to be doing one of our sports shows. Primarily, it was focused on baseball, but we wanted to have him come on for Morning Coffee and talk a little bit. And actually, uh, to kind of kick it off, he's actually bought uh, a Gaston um, to kind of talk about some things with baseball. Yep. Uh, I brought James, who has an incredible story. There's, there's a certain rubbing mud compound that all the major league teams use. Um, it's a local product, and James is a third generation third generation uh, doing this and uh, it's it's fairly interesting his grandfather had a good friend who played with Ty Cobb I believe it was right Lena yeah. uh, I mean that's kind of where this whole thing started so uh, we're just going to kind of ask James if he would start just kind of tell us a little bit about how this whole thing got started and where it is at this day okay well um, actually Lena Blackburn the the man that discovered the mug played for the um, the White Sox in 1913, 14. Um, he played through that organization for a few years. Moved around the league, coached and managed toward the uh, toward the later years. Um, but when the dead ball era ended, um, the umpires found the balls too slippery for the pitchers to handle. There was a lot of a lot of close calls and. Was what was a, the dead? What was the dead ball philosophy as far as how did they determine the dead ball? The dead ball was that was when they used the same baseball for multiple games, okay. and it got to a point where it was falling apart. Um, wow. When they they decided to use new balls in all the games, um, they had to find a way to take the, the the gloss off it, the new the new gloss, and. Um, they experimented with like tobacco juice and infield dirt. Everything that they tried just damaged the leather or it damaged the laces of the ball. So it was like giving the pitcher a nail file. Um, Lena and my grandfather used to fish on a tributary of the Delaware River and uh, they found this mud on the on the banks of, of this tributary and Lena took it into the Philadelphia Athletics Clubhouse who he was he was managing at the time with uh, Connie Mack um, and tried it on the baseballs and it worked so that was in the mid 30s <laughs> by 1938 all the all the American League was using it now, is that, was that a contractual thing at that time, where it was just word spread and, hey, we want to use it, we want to use it? Just word of mouth, word spread. They, I, I have in my, in my collection, I have a, uh, a telegram that came to Lena from one of the southern teams. I forget which team it was, but just all it said was, Lena, need more magic mud. And that, <laughs> that's, that's what they called it. That's so that was like from one mud. of the managers or one of the owners of, a, of one, one of, of the managers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now was it a major league team at that time that asked for it down yeah. there? They yes. Were, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. It's um, and it just spread around the league completely, and the whole American League was using it by 1938. And back in those days, the American League and the National League were they where it was like a fight okay, between so who was better. It was kind of like the old AFL, mm -hmm. NFL yeah, football they, type They thing had they some, nasty, some nasty games when they played, if they played. Um, Lena refused to sell it to the National League until he became a scout for the Phillies in 1950. They, they didn't have the a National choice League was now allowed. that's a National League. Yeah. Now, was there anything used prior or in between that? Like, what did what did they use prior to this being the thing? Like, well, while while they were working on the new balls, they were trying different things. Okay, trying tobacco spit, um, infield dirt, mud from under the bleachers. Um, well, they tried to use the stuff polish. that was accessible, like yeah. accessible that they would have. Yeah, right. easy to get. Right. right. So they all had tobacco juice, right? Yeah, Back in the right. day, they, yeah, that was right. the most readily available substance they had. Right. But right. Right. yeah. This, yeah, they they still um, they were still 
experimenting when he found this. And um, so, out of so all the experiments, nothing became definite except this. Right. How about right. that? Nothing, nothing stuck because everything damaged or discolored the ball too much to use it. Now the mud, it's you know, it comes from Delaware. Is that correct? A tributary of the Delaware. Okay, so the, you're, you're, not gonna get a road, you're not going to get a road map. Well, what's really what's really uh, funny about it? I've se I've seen a lot of stories done about the mud. The mud is it is magical. It, it really is an amazing piece of baseball history that a lot of people don't really think about. But but really, my question is, how did you guys get the monopoly on the mud? You are the Comcast of baseball right. mud, right? Because <laughs> there is nobody that is allowed. To have that substance, that mud on the balls in Major League Baseball, but you. Well, it's it's actually it's a gentleman's agreement that's been held up since the mid thirties. So there's nothing. Wow. There is no there's contract. no contractual. There is no contract. Wow. Um, that's crazy. Rawlings Company tried to duplicate the mud so that they could sell the mud with the balls Big to the business. major league. Well, that's business. what my next question was going. Has there, I mean, have there been people give mud to the major leagues? Like, here's a new mud that they just might have got out of their backyard or something. I mean, who knows? They tried, but I'm sure. How how do they know what the, the difference? I mean, is it really a testable thing where they can say this is totally different than what we use? Um, they would they would be able to tell the difference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they would be able to tell the difference. How about that? It's kind of like the, the, the difference of the water. Like, are the pretzels in, in Philadelphia are the best pretzels in the world? And they say it's because of the water. And it has to have an environmental uh, impact on why your mud is so special. There's, yeah. And he's never yeah. going to tell us, right? Well, no. But there's, I some, but there's some sort of chemical composition of it that makes it so unique and special. I that when you, you rub it on the ball. I can give you a general idea. It, it is definitely geography and geology. Yeah. Uh, the geology of the area, there's a lot of feldvar in the, in, the, in the soil. Right. And that acts as a, um, as a buffing agent. Uh, and, but, but it only builds up the mud. It's, it's basically a, um, a silt. And it only builds up in a certain geography of the way the water is flowing. Okay. It's only uh, it's almost you like, you know, our area, certain parts of South Jersey are known for their wine, their vineyards. You know, and the only other places right. that across the country or across the world are over in like Italy and stuff like that. So it's sort of like that. It's a special area right. of, the, of the country. All the elements have to come together right. in a certain spot. And there's only a few spots that, that I've found where where everything comes together to work. So okay. is there more than one spot you can go to? Uh, that's just, that's just yes. the same consistency you found? Yes, yes. But, okay. but, it, but they're all very, they're very localized. Yeah, they yeah. got to be just pretty close sure proximity, right. Yeah. Just to make sure that you're not tailed, do you have to, like, do you change cars and everything just to get <laughs> I there? was just going to say that. I'm going to get one morning to follow at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning or something. I haven't, haven't had to do that, but I, I have blindfolded people to take them out to, really? to see it, people who wanted to see the harvest, yeah. Really? And it's actually a harvest. Now, do you do it at a certain time of the year? Uh, it used to be during the muddy season. It used to be <laughs> used to be something we harvested only in the fall after Labor Day, um, because there wasn't a whole lot of traffic mm -hmm. in the area where we went, um, and we would harvest in September, October, and that would be enough um, stored for the following season. That would be that would be for the following season. Um, when my wife and I took it over in 2000, um, we put up a website just to see how, you know, see what happened. And we quadrupled the business in the first year. So now I'm harvesting. I, I harvest whenever I can. I harvest year round. If, it, if the ground's not frozen, I can go harvest. Now, I'm assuming over, so you said since the 1930s, right? Right. So I'm assuming like each time that they will say upgrade the balls, you know what I mean? Are they going to you saying, hey, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to make the balls a little differently or whatever. Do you kind of, do they ask you to kind of send the samples of the mud so it makes sure that when they do rub it up, it, it gets the same effect? 
Um, or have balls never changed over the they, years? They haven't. I don't think they've changed the leather. So the baseball really hasn't changed over all no, these not, years. Not really. That's you know, amazing. The indoor winding has, <clears throat> the out part of it hasn't. So I guess it doesn't become sounds effective. Like, yeah. yeah, it's because it sounds. Yeah. It sounds like our government. Just you know, the same things keep going. <laughs> anyway. So now I, this goes back years because we haven't seen each other for a while. But I think the last time we spoke, going back. Um, did, haven't you extended now into the international part of the game? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're okay. in the World Baseball Classic. Um, we get a, lo a lot of the mud that we get overseas goes with major league teams or major league players that go over. Okay. And they play take in it. the off okay. season. Okay. Um, the Dominican League uses us. Uh, Puerto Rico, uh, the uh, Mexican League. Um, I have mud sent to Australia, England, Israel, uh, France. Um, it's an international wow. thing, but more of it goes like with players who are to the winner of all. Right. And yeah. again, none of that's contractual. That's just a knowledge no, and no familiarity and this is what we it's, like type thing. They they know what's what's the real thing. It'd be great if more because people because I get phone shape. calls where they say. Is this the real stuff? Is this the yeah. stuff they use? And yeah, Lena Blackburn is the real mud. That's, that's when everything guy. was great when you can make a handshake deal. That's right. right. Yeah, that, that that's doesn't it. happen anymore. I, no. I want to talk a little bit about um, actually, is there a procedure and what you do? So, right after this commercial break, uh, we're going to come back and talk about that. Okay. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Martha, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Welcome back to Morning Coffee. We're here with Mark and Keith, and we have James from the Lena Blackburn Mud Company, who is the official Major League rub down of the baseballs. And we're going to continue with his story, and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about the rub down procedure. Okay. Uh, well, the, the umpires. Uh, Back in the, in the early days, the umpires were charged with rubbing the balls with the mud. And it, it's a simple task of putting a little bit of mud in your palm, rubbing your palms together, a drop of water, and then you massage the baseball like you see them do on the field. Um, and that, that's that been passed on to the clubhouse manager. Okay. Because uh, I think when the umpires union came in, they. Well, plus I think it's a lot of baseballs they do now. It's uh, seven to ten dozen per balls game. per game. The umpires aren't going to take that time. No. Now, yeah. the umpires inspect them after the rubdown? Yes. Okay. It has to be done in the umpire's locker room. Oh, okay. And they inspect them and carry them out to the field. What part does the water play since it's already a mud? Uh, Adding the water to it. The, you make You need so little of it. Okay. Uh, if, if you don't add water to it, it'll darken the ball too much. Oh, okay. The water okay. thins out the mud, and it, it just does the, okay, the process. It probably gives it the right consistency to be able to, to rub without giving that dark shine to right. the ball, because you want the ball, they want the ball to still look white, uh, you know. Still got to be a pearl. Dep that's right. <laughs> Depends <laughs> on, if, on if you're a pitcher or a batter. Yeah. Right, 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 right. That's a good point. That's a good point. Nolan Ryan loved them dark. I can cold. imagine. So Jim actually brought some of the... Uh, some of the mud with him. Now, do the major league clubs get this? Is this what the container what the container looks like? Is it a big vat? Is it a it, thousand it, of these? No, it's the same type of container. It's a little bit bigger. It holds a little bit more mud. It holds about twice that amount of mud. But now, it's the same type of container. Now you have you you know you talked about having a gentleman's agreement with these guys and and um, them not going out and trying to find someone else. Do, can you are you allowed to sell it to? Um, like say a little league wanted some of that. Could you yes. sell it to them? Yes, we we sell it online now. We sell it to collectors. We sell it to little league. It's been in the little league world series. We sell it to college really? the conferences, conferences, college umpires, college nice. teams, um, and we've expanded into football within the past five years. Yeah. Really. So they don't use, they can't use the mud in game situations of football, but they can practice with it, right? No, it's in the game. They're using they it during, use, during so the game. Is it the same process? The balls get rubbed down yeah. prior to the game, just like they do the baseball. Right, right. In, in football, it, it's a little different. When you're on offense, you have your own right. balls right. in the game. Right. Um, 
so one team could have them rub, the other team could not. Which still doesn't make any so. sense to me. It's the same football. It's not like you know. Right, it, unless you're playing in New England. Well, but, yeah, you know, well that's right. the, you, you know that, that was coming. You up. beat me to <laughs> it because you know some guys they take the air out of the football to get a better grip. Other guys are using the baseball mud to get a better grip. Uh, here's right. another show. What about the theory? <laughs> now I, I want to start a rumor and a terrible uh, theory that. There wasn't enough mud on Mitch Williams baseball in 1993 when that ball went over the fence there and we lost that World Series. Jim, do you have any inside track on that? Can you tell me anything about... Uh... The only inside track I have on that is I, I cried my eyes out when oh. I watched that game. All right, so now I know he is a Phillies fan, which is All right, a that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good thing. Um, what do you think about uh, this year's Phillies team? Do you think that, uh, you know, obviously the Phillies are in a rebuilding phase. What do, you, what do you think? Extra mud up in Philadelphia this year? Or? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make sure they have plenty. Good. I'm gonna make sure they That's have. That's great. Extra. How no much? Charge. How how many? I don't know if you can do it, estimating gallons or whatever. But how much would you say in a course of a regular season, a major league team goes through? Okay, this size holds about um, two pounds of mud. Each major league team at at their home park gets six pounds of mud. Um, most of them can make the season with that. Okay. Six pounds a month. Okay. Uh, there are stadiums where there's, uh, you know, where the stands are closer and all the foul balls go into the stands. Yeah, okay. and, you know, not yeah. a lot of foul territory or there's a lot of home runs or sometimes the players are just flipping the balls out to the right, stands. Right, they'll sometimes they'll, they'll call me and say, hey, we need more mud. Is there, is there a, diff a certain place you have to keep that? Like, you know... Once it's, um, does it come with a seal on it? And then you want you to break it open, you know, keep it in a, you know, obviously. Cool dry place? Cool dry place, can't happen there. Not, yeah. not, not really. The only place they have an issue with how they, how they store it is when you get into Texas, Arizona, Colorado, the dry air will, will dry it out so much that you can't reconstitute it. So they have to make sure they keep it wet. And somebody told me that, um, Colorado keeps it in a humidor. I was just going to say they got to, something's got to be done from the humidity standpoint. Yeah, right. How about with, that? With the lack of humidity, it will take yeah. all the water out of the mud and make it so it's like a almost like a rock. Now the fact that it's contractual or not, it's a handshake thing. Does each team pay you individually, or is it a major? How did that? How does that major, work? Major Major League Baseball pays for every team. Okay. For the beginning of the season. Okay. If they want more, they the a team would have That's to call me team. directly, okay. and then they would pay me directly. That's, That's amazing. amazing. What type of? I, I would imagine that you've gotten to meet a lot of ball players, players of the you know big players of the games, commissioners, and and all of that by being such an integral part of the game. Who are some of the 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 people that you've met or admired and got to meet? It's well, the, it, that's that's uh, kind of funny. I I don't get to meet a lot of people in the game today. <clears throat> I go to the Hall of Fame every few years. I'll go up and I get to meet the guys that are retired, the guys that are going into the Hall right. of Fame. Um, you know, I got I got to meet Sandy Koufax and Stan Musial and Monty Irvin and. Uh, Steve Carlton, I met up there. And These are giants of the Le game. I Le mean, that's, and that's what we all grew up with. Yeah. yeah. But now, Major League Baseball is, is so uh, such a business now. It's hard to get close to people like that. Mm -hmm. um, now, like you would think, I get free tickets to games. Is your I product don't. up in Cooperstown? <laughs> What's that? Is your product up in Cooperstown now? It has to. Yes. Be. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I was going to say. Um, it has to be. Actually. It got the name Lena Blackburn in 1969 when they put it in the Hall of Fame. Well, how about that? And that's, cool. that's the year that I met Musial and Irving. Ever, and ever have a pitcher say, hey, listen, can you send me my mud with a little bit of extra, like, thin rocks or something in it that'll <laughs> scuff us up a little bit more? <laughs> Not yet, but yeah, it may happen. It may happen. Everybody's looking for that edge. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me at all. That's pretty funny. That is amazing stuff. We're actually going to take another quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. We're back on Morning Coffee and we're talking about mud. And it is the greatest morning in the history of mornings.
<laughs> so, Jim, we want to know a little bit about the process of rubbing down a ball. So we have the mud, we have a cap full of water. That is all of the water that you need to be able to mix uh, the mud to properly rub with a baseball. So why don't you show us how to rub down a ball? Okay, uh, I'll try. I'm not a professional at this. I'm a, I'm a mud farmer. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's all right. Basically, it's just a... Fingertip amount. Fingertip amount of mud, rub between the palms, and then a drop of water. That may not have been enough, but... And... So it's a very it's little amount. He did not use a lot of mud at all. That no. that is why the six pounds last. I that's mean, it's, right. It's it lasts like, so long. It's like about a mount that somebody would put an eyeshadow on or something. Right. Like mm -hmm. really, like that little. Bit I've of I've, I've had people tell me I should put an expiration date on it so I would sell more because <laughs> it lasts forever. <laughs> and that's a rub baseball. That is uh, that's amazing. Now it's got no slickness to it, it. It's got no slickness to it. It's got a little bit of stickiness, but not enough to, to impact, just enough of a great grip. Now, the ball is still white. How, how did you guys develop this so that you could keep the ball white after rubbing this, this you know, almost black, dark brown, grayish mud all over it? That's part of the magic. It's just a mystery. It's a magic it's a mystery. Mud. I, I know. Just, you see my I hand, you can barely tell slip. I touched it. Yeah, that's so. that's amazing. So this this adds such a grip and such a nice feel to the ball. Does it really piss you off when these guys try to add other foreign substances to the ball and, and, and manipulate it that way? I mean, well, let's go back to Gaylord Perry, right? That guy was notorious for cheating and putting all sorts of crap all over tar, the ball. Yeah. That, that it probably bothers, bothers you, It bothers right? me a little bit. What, what bothers me more is... is if a pitcher has a bad day and complains about the mud because, <laughs> because he had a bad day, don't blame my mud. You sent him a tweet, don't blame the mud there, pal. I, I had a shutout, but James ruined it. And I don't, I don't remember which one, but it was a Yankee who came out. And said, oh. Mo. That's funny. Mo Rivera How said really? something about the mud. It, it must had, have been had mud. a problem with the mud, but he had, he, he had a bad day. You're kidding me. I'm serious. Mariano I mean, Rivera mentioned the mud? I, I would have hit the roof. I would have driven up to New York and said, yo, Mariano. I would think that if a pitcher wanted to doctor up the ball, he would want it rubbed down because then doctoring it up would cause more of a right. rough surface. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you're adding to it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, James, where can, uh, where can the, uh, the viewers and listeners out there uh, find more information about your mud? You can... You can Find more about it, read the history, uh, see some photos, and uh, order it if you'd like at www.baseballrubbingmud.com. Okay. And, awesome. Uh, right here in New Jersey, I can't believe that this big tradition that we have of Major League Baseball is right here in New Jersey. Amazing. It's awesome. It is awesome. Not only is it New Jersey, you're talking like five miles away from here. Five like, miles away like from here? Right here. Secret location, though. Secret location. <laughs> so do not try to follow him out of the parking lot, guys. <laughs> I want to be blindfolded someday, though, and go with him. I'm oh, I'm coming. Yeah, yeah wanna, we're going, I wanna definitely. I want to see that process. Absolutely. I see that process. We can do that. We're yeah. going to take this show on the road. We're, we're going to come and check out the mud live in person. Yeah. We can do that. That would be very cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is going to, uh, we're going to go to a commercial break, and we're going to be back with our next guest.